Hey everybody, it's Yvonne from Western Star Art and Wear. We are ready for chapter 12. This chapter is a little disturbing. Seems like uh, bullying's been around forever, obviously, and uh, there's a little bit of bullying going on in this chapter. Anyway, we'll get started. Pretty soon, the group came in from the mills. They were all full of cotton and had to work all night. They looked beat. Back then, it was 12 hours a night. Child labor was all the go. Well, Ma had them something to eat and they all fell asleep when they was done. We was given something to keep us going, Dobbin biscuits. All the meat had been eaten. We was told to stay outside and to not make any noises and that we did. Pretty soon a boy about my age or a little older came over to my place and asked me if I wanted to shoot some bones. What it was is you dug three holes a certain span apart and then you made a head tall. You had to make all of these holes and back to head tall before missing a hole or getting shot by the other feller. The one who got out first had a chance to shoot your knuckles if you lost. His name was Dom Damon Clayton. We dug the holes and made the line for head tall. I had never played this marble game before and I had some thoughts about letting someone shoot my knuckles with a glassy. First time will be just for trial, he says, and we get into it. I shoot my marble and he shot his. Mine came pretty close but didn't go in. His went a little to the right of mine. I shot in a hole and made a span and went for the next hole. Had I been up on the game, I would have shot his and sent him back to head tall. I made my second hole and spanned and tried for the third hole. I missed. Damon made his second, went through the holes and back to head tall. I went through the holes a couple of times and shot before him and I had won. The next time he win, he won and I got my knuckle shot, then I would win and shoot his and so forth and so on for a while until we tired and quit for the time being. You want to roll some tires, he asked. I told him, all right, so he showed me how. We got a couple of old tires and slapped them with our hands, sort of pushing as you go. Once you get her rolling, she ain't too hard to keep it going. It was fun, and after I got the hang of it, it was even more fun. We rolled them down and met some Freeman kid and his sister, Edna. He had some sort of heart condition, and they weren't supposed to hinder him. I didn't like him very well, so I sort of steered clear of him. I was to see a lot of him later. We played a while, and Damon's ma called him to the house, and I went back to mine. I didn't want to make much noise, so I went up to Mr. Hall's barn and saw Charlie Hoss. He came over and nuzzled my hand and nickered softly. I know, boy, I lowed. I feel the same way. I don't like this place either. I gave him a little hay and rubbed his head. Mr. Hall came out to the barn and said howdy to me. Are you one of the children that moved in from down there? And he pointed to the red house. Yes, sir, I said. We used to live on a farm and we had to move here. That's a pretty rough thing to have to go through and to lose all that space to come into a town where there's so little, he said. Yes, sir, it show is. Come here and let me see your lip you have. That looks pretty bad to me. I think it's infantigo. Let's see here. And he turned my lip one way and the other. Yes, sir, that's a very serious sore. Has your ma done anything to it? No, sir, she hasn't paid me much mind. She has about all she could handle as it is without paying me much attention. He said that he was going to town and he would get me something for my lip. That was fine with me because it broke open and bled a lot. The next morning he came to the back door and he asked Ma if it would be all right if he tried to cure the sore on my lip. Pa and all the other ones was asleep and Ma said it was all right with her. Mr. Hall took a wooden paddle and smeared the stuff on my lip. He told me not to lick it because it might make me sick. It didn't hurt so I didn't mind. I played with Damon and the other children that day and forgot all about it. That same day, a feller came up to the house in a shining gitney and knocking on the door. I went and told Ma because the others were sleeping. He went into the kitchen and seems like he was about to step and poop by the way he walked. Ma offered him a straight chair, but he declined. I'm employed by the state, he told Ma, and he showed her his credentials. Ma wouldn't have known what they were anyway. Miss Clayton, you have several children here of school age, and the law says that they must go to school. Therefore, I want their names and ages, and I want them in school in the next few days. My man, Ma says, is sleeping, and I don't know what to tell you. Mr. Clayton does not have the right to say what the government will or will not do. He must abide by the law or be punished or go to jail. In that case, I guess they'll be there when you say. Where the, is this school? He gave Ma the directions to where we were to go, 
and what we had to have. They must have a drinking cup, pencil, paper, and colors. The older one will have to go to Roxborough City School. Up to fourth grade, they'll have to go to Cotton Hill. I had noticed Andy Clayton's kid going to school every morning, all except Damon. Seems he had a hard time getting it all together. Now, I'll expect to see all these kids enrolled in the next few days, he says when he left. Pa got up later that afternoon and sat at the tape, kitchen table. Ma told him what the feller had said. I don't like anybody telling me what my young'uns have to do or whatever I have to do for that matter. Ma says that feller says it's this or you go to jail. I still don't like it. I aim to put all of them in the mill as soon as they, they'll take them so they don't have to have no education. I don't have any, so why should they? They'd be getting uppity and be telling me what to do, and I don't aim to abide by that. I don't have any money to buy them things, so you'll have to send them on as they are. We don't get paid until two weeks is up, and then they pay us for one week. I don't understand this, but they didn't ask me. So the next day, we got our stuff together and went off to Cotton Hill. Right ran up to town, so it was just Sue and me. Sue was only nine or ten, and they was wasn't going to work her in the mill until she was 12. We didn't have any of the things that we were supposed to have, but we went on anyway. We had quite a piece to go when we met up with a gang of boys about my age or older. They said, what's your name, boy? And I told them, ain't that a heck of a name for a boy? Are you sure you ain't a girl? They laughed and slapped their legs. In the meantime, one of them had slipped behind me and the one in the front pushed me over him. I fell pretty hard on the ground and it hurt pretty bad. I knew talking to them wouldn't do no good, so I tore into the one nearest me and grabbed him and bit him, and I kicked at his legs. Get this kid off of me, the guy yelled, so a couple of them caught me and threw me on the ground. Sue tried to intervene, but they threw her on the ground, too. I'm going to show you how a turkey peeps over a log, they said, and they grabbed some of the hair on the back of my neck and pulled it out. Then they scrubbed my head till the blood ran down my neck, and there was five or six of them, and they could do what they wanted. One was a leader, and he had black hair. They called him Chaw, and one was called Dinkund. I didn't get any of the other names. Now, to prove if this is a boy or a girl, I'm going to pull his pants down and spit on him. Being from the country, I had never fought or even had to till now, so I didn't know what to do. And since there was so many of them, there wasn't much I could do. So they threw me on the ground and spit tobacco juice on me. It burned like fire. Then Chaw said, I'm going to see if this is a girl. So the two of them held down Sue and Chaw felt her up. I don't have time, but I'll see you later. They let Sue up and she swung a haymaker at him and connected it with his belly. He bent over, but he came back and knocked her down. Then they got me by the legs and arms and one of them got in front of me and they swung me back and forth a couple of times and then hit the feller in front of me and he went flying. Finally, they let us loose and ran on to school. Sue and I tried to get ourselves together and brushed ourselves off as best we could and went on to the school that set up on the hill. That's why they called it Cotton Hill. The real name was Albright or something or other. We got there as the bell was just ringing. The teacher came in, or I should say teachers, and had us line up according to size. There was Mrs. Wide-Eye, there was Mrs. Yancey, and Mrs. Wide-Eye was first and second, and Mrs. Yancey was third and fourth grade. I was put in the first grade with Mrs. Wide-Eye, and Sue was put in Mrs. Yancey's. We marched in, and they gave us a seat according to what grade we were in. I was in the first, so I went on the west side of the room. I showed to remember that room, for that's where I learned calisthenics and math. We, we counted them cones so many times I could have counted them in my sleep. I have... Here's six cones, and if you take away two of them, how many will I have? And on and on. I was so skilled in the counting when I went into the second grade. That old gal sure did drum it into my head. She comes around and took all of our names and ages. I told her mine and where I came from. Well, you are not a lint dogger, I see, but they will soon remedy that for you. Have you brought the pop proper things with you that Mr. Farewell came and told your ma at your house? To bring no ma'am i replied i ain't got nothing but me my pa says that he don't have any money and he ain't going to buy me anything till he gets paid that sounds about right for the illiterate farmers around here the lint doggers why did i ever choose teaching i thought if i had any say in the matter i wouldn't be here well since you don't have any paper or pencil you'll just have to sit here and look on until you do get the things that you need to work with 
After the names had been all accounted for, she had us sing the song, Good Morning to You. It went like this. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. We're all in our places with bright, shining faces because this is the way to start the new day. Then we had to come and bend up and down and up and down and did a few hops. It went like this. Mr. Jumping Jack is a funny old man. He jumps and he jumps as fast as he can. His feet fly out and his hands fly out too. Mr. Jumping Jacks, how do you do? This went on till I was all tired out. After my outdoor that ordeal that morning, she didn't ask about my head and the dirt on my clothes and I didn't venture anything. All right, children, she finally said. We are going to have a 15-minute recess here, and you can get a drink of water and go to the outhouse if you have to. We marched outside to the teacher dismissed us. Everyone was getting water from the pump, but they didn't let you drink unless you had a cup. There was a girl standing there, and she saw our plight and came to the rescue. She took a piece of paper and folded it like a cup and gave it to Sue. It held water enough for both of us to get a drink. The girl's name was Thelma Hodgood and she was very nice. She played around with Mary Sue Walker, who I thought was about right. As soon as the teacher went in for a minute, the boys ganged up on me again. They caught me and was a banging my head against the wall. This Mary Sue says to him, y'all let that boy go or I'll go in and get the teacher. They let me go and she cleaned me up a bit. She smelled so nice and she talked nice to me and rescued me from the mob. I fell in love with her right off, seven-year-old love, that is. The gang let me down, but they promised to get me again after school. Lunchtime came, and we didn't have any lunch and no paper to get any water. So Mary Sue come to my rescue again and gave me some of her lunch. She had two ham biscuits, and she gave me one. I sure It sure was good. She also got me some water. Ophie Bryan gave Sue some of her lunch, and we both had some. The rest of the school year, Sue played with Opie, and I became, and they became best friends. Mary Sue sort of helped look after me. I liked her a lot. I remember, remember this day that she walked home with my sister and I had messed my britches and I couldn't walk with her. It sure tore me up. The way it happened was after the final recess, I had to go and I had never been restricted before and I didn't know how to hold it in. I asked the teacher and she wouldn't let me go and I sat and I held it as long as I could. But when I stood up to leave that afternoon, I messed all over myself and I could feel it running down my legs and I went to be dismissed. As I walked home, I walked backwards so they couldn't see my backside. I want to tell you, I was one ripe young and when I got home. As I walked in the yard that afternoon, we wanted to tell Pa about the paper, and he didn't talk to us, so we had to wait a week or two for the stuff. Well, Ma sees me and says, Boy, you're a mess if I ain't ever seen it. Yes, I'm my load, I show sure am. She handed me a pan of water and told me to wash off, and then she got me a pair of pants to wear. Why in the name of all get out did you mess yourself, she asked. I told her about the incident at school, and it says, and she says, it seems like they would give a little boy the time to poop, she says. Anyways, you have to get ready for another day, so that's the way it is in our lives. After I got to running on all fours again, I began to forget all about the bad things. I had to find a way to keep them boys off of me and Sue. I didn't know what it would be, but it would be something. Damien came over, and we played some marbles and made some roads in the side of the bank. Mr. Hall came by and put some more grease on my sore. Seems like it was a getting better. And that is the end of chapter 12. Uh, kind of sad the way it goes, poor, those poor kids. But um, I'm sure it made them stronger and they made it through. And we will get on with the book later. I hope you guys are having a great day and I hope you have a great weekend. I will talk to you later.